Calls from some lawmakers to start loosening restrictions on certain jobs and businesses in order to reopen parts of the economy. Here in Illinois, Republican lawmakers have called on Governor Pritzker to make some changes to the stay-at-home order. That's something the governor has said he's considering. State Representative Mark Batnick has recently written Governor Pritzker saying the continued restrictions could have serious long-term consequences. Join us right now live is Republican State Representative Mark Batnick. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on, and thanks for all the work you guys have been doing oh, covering the You nation. too. Tell me this, what are the restrictions you're talking about? What are the problems or consequences that could come from the restrictions? Well, you know, I'm, I'm holding one right here in my hand, and this is a, a referral for a colonoscopy for me. Obviously, things like colonoscopies or breast cancer screenings truly aren't elective procedures, but these are the type of procedures that are being that are being delayed right now. So one of the things we focused on during our press conference today was the fact that that we we need to have a balance with what the hospitals are doing. What are some other things? I know that we've talked about uh, parks and reopening the state parks and, and other businesses you think that can reopen with social distancing in place. Sure. So, you, you know, I look at one of the things that I've really pushed is the, the use of face coverings. We call this rebalancing. The idea that a grocery store right now is open, packed, and nobody has any covering over their mouth we think that's an issue. We can rebalance that by having people wear face masks or face coverings in places like grocery stores and big boxes, but also allow some small shoe stores, some mom and pop sort of places to open, maybe at a lower density than what they normally open. You know, I have a, a, a constituent in my district that owns a, a furniture manufacturer that has three employees and several thousand square feet. There's no reason that person can't operate, um, can't operate their business. But obviously things like state parks, maybe golf courses, uh, they're, they're important to our mental health. And, and the idea is to really get people spread out. I go into the grocery stores and the big boxes and they're packed right now. Well, it sounds like a potpourri of things that you're talking about. I guess my question is, how would you do this, you know, making a, a, a plan to do it? You know what I'm saying? And when do you want this to happen? Sure. I, well, I, I think the governor is going to make some adjustments in his next executive order. And I do I do understand the difficulty with it. But I think you can do things with density, right? So any sort of business that can have limited density on a square foot basis is pretty easy to do. I think when you start looking at outdoor activities, those are things that you can do as well. You can put numbers on, you, you know, what the percentage of ICU beds are available at your hospital that allow you to do some of these other procedures that, that save save lives. So it is going to take some time to go through industry by industry and item by item, but, but it is a rebalancing. And remember, if we start requiring people to wear face coverings in these crowded stores, I actually think we're going to have a better effect than we've had the last last month because 90 percent of households send somebody to the grocery store and right now those people aren't protected hmm. so you've written to the governor what exactly was your message to him about some of the concerns that you have the longer this goes on well obviously the hospital the hospitalization the elective the elective procedure thing is, is certainly a big thing people are putting off important preventative medicine uh things that need to be done that's obviously number one uh number two is just the mental health aspect number three is the fact that look suicides go up as unemployment goes up we started a helping hands program in our district to help keep seniors isolated i think we need to do more to help the vulnerable population stay in their home i think we need to do more to protect people when they're when they're going into stores but then we need to open up other parts of the economy and rebalance things and actually have a more positive outcome now I understand when the governor did things uh, four or five weeks ago, you have to do things quick, and it was a blunt instrument. But we've learned more uh, about the virus, and, and, and we can do a better job. And I'm confident the governor is going to get there. I'm, he, he certainly reached out to me. We've had some, some good conversations about things we can do. He's working with his team, and, and I'm hopeful for a good outcome for what I perceive is going to be an extended order uh, continuing past May 1st. So what happens when the second wave that's predicted to come in fall when it actually happens, then what? Well, see, and this is this is really important to doing some of these things now. So, in my district, back back in uh, March 12th, we actually started a program called Helping Hands, and the idea was to to, to get volunteers in the district that were not in an at-risk population, help get groceries and do things for people that that were at risk. 
if we start implementing some of these programs now statewide, we know how to mitigate these issues in the fall. Had this program been in place going into this pandemic when it started, we'd be in a better spot right now. So we need to start preparing relatively soon for the fall. It might be a situation where by, by a certain day of the year, we're just going to decide that you're going to have to wear face coverings in stores again, or you're not going to have the same density uh, that, that, that we're used to and accustomed to in, in our country. So we need to start preparing for now, but also kind of test running, doing a dry run for what might happen if there's not a, a good treatment by the fall. Before we let you go, Representative, let's ask you quickly about your thoughts on the state Democratic plan to request federal bailout money that would include money to fill our pension hole. It's been met with a lot of pushback. Is this a matter of why not ask or is this an overreach in your opinion? I, you know, I thought it was an overreach. I, I, I will say that with the amount of money that's coming from the feds, one of the things that's happening is, is the money that's going to state has strings on it. Um, what we need in Illinois is different than what Hawaii needs, is different than what New York needs. So I think the right approach might to be to, to, to do a blanket block grant system, maybe on population uh, across the United States. It was, it was a pretty big ask that they asked for uh, with that letter. That was amazing. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate State Representative Mike Batnick. Thank you so much. Thank Mark you, Batnick. Me. I'm sorry. I apologize. Right. <laughs> we are continuing to track all the latest developments in the COVID-19 pandemic throughout all of our newscasts. You can read more at WGNTV.com slash COVID-19 and get breaking updates through our free WGN News app.